Okay, greetings and welcome to another episode of the Planetary Persuader. I am Cosmic Kev, your host. This is for the weekend beginning October 12th, Friday, 2018. Looking in the sky today, we would see the moon in the actual constellation of Scorpio. Now, looking in the planet scheme, you know, of course, it was a very, a very sad week for many of us here in the good old U.S. of A. But um, because of blackout Brett and all that stuff, but uh, we have some good things happening. Yeah, you know, we have things to be happy about. Um, you know, there is like a spiritual revolution going on, and of having a more advanced empathy and a higher aesthetic. That's because of Neptune and Pisces, and we really want to work with the Earth and make it so that all living beings have a chance. And Uranus and Taurus is the perfect setup for this. Um, on Saturn and Capricorn, we have to be real about our limitations. We have to show what's um, maturing us, what's refining us, what's making us better people. Um, and then we have um, Jupiter in uh, Scorpio. Now in Scorpio in both systems, too, because just yesterday it went out of the constellation of Libra right into Scorpio. Yeah, on the sky, actually. So that's the actual constellation, the sidereal. Sidereal, Jupiter's left sidereal Libra, and it's in, it's in Scorpio now in both systems. Um, looking at Mars, Mars is in sidereal Capricorn, but it's in um, Western Aquarius. And so it's time for us to use our energy to protect and help get rid of the ails of the poorer people and people that have been disenfranchised which is basically everybody except for billionaires <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, um, and a very few privileged people and, and some of that privilege extends culturally to to poor white men too but it's um they're still more likely to end up in prison, so that in which are kind of like the lowest caste of people. So it's it's there's a big debate going on, I suppose. Um, there is also um, Venus retrograde in Scorpio. And some people, I've heard some other astrologers and Western astrologers call oh, this is a dark goddess, and this is you know all the anger coming out and everything and sure I mean there's some of that but let's let's talk a little bit about some other meanings of retrograde planets so so Venus is in the actual constellation of Libra this whole time you know and, and so that is about creativity and the scales of Libra traditionally in Vedic astrology and Jyotish are not about so much justice as they are about going to the market and making a deal with somebody okay you've got a little bit of gold here I'll make a deal with you you want this I'll give you that you can try some of this, try some of that. So it's all about bargaining. And the other thing is aesthetics, it's art. You know, the, the three nakshatras that rule Libra, Shitra, uh, Swati, and uh, Vishaka, they all have a certain kind of aesthetic about them. You know, whether we're talking about the pearl of Shitra or that tender reed blowing in the wind of Swati or the triumphant gateway to Vishaka or the potter's wheel. There's something involved in creativity that we find in Libra. And whenever a planet goes retrograde, it slows down and it means its beam is actually more powerful. And so this is a powerful time for an artist and we are just getting over this week, earlier this week, we had the constellation of Saraswati, which is beautiful for artists when you have Mercury um, Jupiter and Venus conjoining each other and it really it's a the Saraswati yoga is a really good thing and that's happening too or it happened and so there should be sort of a release this weekend and a feeling of hey let's make friends let's get along let's um, reach out to each other let's learn to forgive let's protect those who are less fortunate let's protect our our women and children and, and poor people. And um, 
let's and people that are handicapped or they're you know um, not you know not in the the more popular heterosexual realms of sexuality. So here we are, and let's go one by one with your sign on the planetary persuader, beginning with you, Aries. So greetings, Aries. Welcome to your horoscope. Now the social life has been a big focus for the whole year be i mean not the whole year but since summer with um mars being in aquarius a lot of the time and yeah it did retrograde a little bit back into capricorn so there was some career action you were you were dealing with now jupiter coming out of your seventh house starting to come out it's still there you know, in, in Scorpio, and no, coming out of your 8th house, reaching out towards your ninth house, because it's about to go into Sagittarius, so, you were really in a lot of mysticism and stuff, and now it's sort of like you're getting ready to travel this winter, you're getting ready to make plans to uh, move on to further heights and further places, and it's like a really great weekend for you, where you're feeling adventuresome, you're ready to take on a higher philosophy and renew yourself in some ways. So all in all, I'm going to say it's a plus, I'm going to say it's positive, um, you're doing better in your career world and work, and uh, you're not ignoring your spiritual life, you're, you're willing to take that spiritual life to a deeper place. Okay. Okay. Well. Greetings, Taurus. Welcome to your horoscope. I mean, there's things you're excited about. Now, now Uranus in your first house is retrograde, and I mean, this is just sort of that early Taurus, people born on the 20, you know, the 20th the 20, through the 23rd, maybe, that are really feeling this. Not too much after that, of April, you know, those, those people. Or people with, like, three degrees or less Taurus rising. And or, you know, we'll say three degrees or less Taurus moon, even, even 29, 28 degrees Aries. Um, how do you become more contemporary to the world? How do you stimulate progress while working with the earth and being true to what's practical? And that's like the, the question. And there's been sudden upheavals and different things that have happened in your life. And on the other side of this is, um, is you know, Mercury and Venus. And um, so we're trying to get information about what's going on. And we're trying to engage in a thrilling, exciting love life. <laughs> and who couldn't use that? You know, who wouldn't want that? Um, but, you know, Venus retrograde... And you're a Taurus, it could have an effect. You know, there could be this, especially with Venus in the seventh house right now. So there's this feeling like, okay, um, I can do this, but I wonder, you know, I'm really, it's slowing down. I'm wondering what the complications are with this, you know, and that's, I think, that's a lot of things. I think for those of you who are in love relationships, you're questioning, why am I here in this love relationship? And those of you who are not in love relationships that want to be in one, suddenly you're kind of backing off and going, oh my God, you know, is this really what I want? You know, as, as things are coming to you. So it's all good, you know, it's all good to think about these things. Another thing I've, I've heard about this too, is that, you know, there's this general effect um, for people who were born in like the late 50s, early 60s, and people born in like the mid 70s, and people born in the mid 80s are all getting these Venus hits. Mid 80s, it's a Venus hit on your Pluto. Mid 70s, it's a Venus hit on Uranus. Um, and uh, early 60s, late 50s, it's a Venus hit on your Neptune. And so this is all like, okay, what are we doing with this? You know, how are we vibing in a higher way with our love and our creativity? So, yeah. Okay. 
All right. Hello, Gemini. Welcome to your horoscope. It's so good to be here with you today. Um, you know, Mercury is uh, now moved over into your sixth house. So it's like you're really concerned about health issues. And you're really concerned about looking good at work and with your coworkers. Those are two things that are happening. On the other hand, you're having a lot of fun and happiness. And you're learning a lot because as the sun transfers travels through your fifth house, it's about your children, it's about learning, it's about creative expression, and there's this element of fun, I, I imagine, for Gemini since the new moon, Monday night, Tuesday, depending on where you live in the, in the world. And so, also, and I didn't mention this earlier, I wish I did though, and I'll mention it to you, Gemini, is oh, that, okay. you know, this is so. like, we're on like the fourth day of Navratri, which is um, the nine-day festival of the goddess in uh, Hindi mythology. And so there's these wonderful things occurring in these times. I think it, I'm pretty sure it starts out with Durga, getting rid of all the evil and the demonic tendencies, and then Saraswati teaching us now how to learn and be instrumental, or Lakshmi blessing us, these three goddesses are celebrated during this nine-day festival and it's a beautiful thing and um, what a wonderful way for all of us to celebrate the feminine and I think one of the things is like as as you know if you're a Gemini man it's like you have to like embrace your female like embrace the fact that you are vulnerable you are receptive you are capable of nurturing you're capable of making mistakes and maybe you need protection sometimes too we don't have to feel like it's all riding on this all or nothing, one gender's like this, one gender's like that. I mean, females have been great about it in the last 50 years of embracing male stuff. I mean, they wear men's clothes, it doesn't make them cross-dressers or gay or anything, but we're still in the place that if we wear a dress or something, everybody thinks, oh, what's wrong, now they're trans, or, you know, it's, it doesn't, we're much more in, in the box, you know, if you're, if you're a man, and Gemini, you're so aware of polarities and how things work this way. And so this is like a great week for you to kind of look at all these crazy inconsistencies and to have a lot of fun with it too. Okay, so greetings Cancer, welcome to your horoscope. All right, so you've had this really nice year of creative vibe and enjoying your teacher energy, enjoying your children more and all of that was due to Jupiter's transit in your fifth house and that's heading towards your sixth house and so Get ready. It's like, what can I do to have better health? What can I do to have better relationships with my workers, my small pets, be more organized, um, have better health, have a better love life that with my workers <laughs> and um, people I'm in a cooperative endeavor to serve, adding that, you know, adding that, you know, the spiritual service, the karma yoga, that's what's going to be coming in. Now, with sun in your fourth house. You're aware of who your family is, who your tribe is, who has your back, who supports you. How can you be a more supportive player during this period in your life? That's the question coming up, and that's your role this week. I mean, looking at the weekend, I'd say that is also part of what's being emphasized. And um, But once we get into, say, like Monday, you're going to be a lot more... Um, oriented towards romance, even even Sunday, by Sunday night, it'll seem very romantic, and, and Tuesday as well. All right, well, hello, Leo, welcome to your horoscope. Okay, so, Libra time, you know, they call that the debilitated sign. Um, like, what's that mean? Well, I mean, it means that, you know, because the energy of light is shrinking in the northern hemisphere, during Libra time, you know, it's like that grandiose, truth-loving light of Leo is just somewhere else. So you're celebrating life, and you're allowing yourself to um, open your heart more, be more open-hearted. And that's with your friends, your neighbors, your siblings, that's where it should be at anyhow. It's also a good time for you to work on your communication skills, um, 
with Jupiter, Venus, and, and uh, Mercury transiting your fourth house, you're questioning what really makes me happy? Who's really my family? Who is my tribe? Who's going to have my back? And um, you now you're only as good as your last performance. That's, that's what they say. <laughs> so I think the best way to do that is to con just continue to have other people's back. Now, relationships, people might confront you about things, but be open to it. Accept it. Say, yeah, I understand. That had to be hard for you. You know, the whole denial clause, you know, denial is a river in Egypt. It's not like a really good form of behavior. And, and the thing about denial is it really disempowers us. When we can own our bad stuff as well as our good stuff, we become more powerful people. And Leo, I know you like being powerful. And you've got this north node in the first house. And a lot of times the north node, when it conjoins sun or first house, you know, we're dealing with, you know, maybe alcoholism or unconscious behavior, drugs and demonic lust or whatever it is, you know. And so we got to come to terms of um, trying to be better and trying to bring some human wholeness that brings dignity. Mm, mm, mm. Greetings, Virgo. Welcome to your horoscope. Okay. So, we want more life. We want more love. We want more peace. We're in this place right now where we want a lot of things. We're worried about our material health. And a lot of that's been coming. You know, a lot of Virgos are being materially blessed. And, and part of the way to be material blessed is just to continue giving. And it will come back to you. Um, you know, so Mercury now in your third house, um, great place for communication, for understanding, Jupiter there, Venus there, so working on art projects, working with your hands, you know, playing guitar or piano or writing poetry, writing in your journal, um, writing letters to friends, uh, getting back to old school love letters, you know, we can really feel a lot better a lot of times when we just drop out of cyberspace for a little bit and get back into the non-electric tangible, it, it feels good. It really does. And it's, it's refreshing. And I feel bad for young people because I think a lot of social skills, like the people will text each other in restaurants while they're sitting next to each other. It's so bizarre. But I guess this is what they do, you know. And I, I'm like thinking to myself, you know, like, don't you, like, play footsies or hold hands or do any of, like, the cool stuff we used to do anymore? I mean, maybe that'll get you in trouble. I mean, if it's mutual, it's fun, you know. Usually you know. Usually you know if it's fun. If they take their leg away, then don't go back there. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Greetings, Libra. Welcome to your horoscope. Um... Yeah, let's see. This is renewal for you. I mean, this is a sweet time. This is a time where you should feel a sense of revival. And I think economically things are improving for you. I think things for your family life are improving for you. So there's all these improvements happening. And this weekend is a good weekend for travel, taking a little trip, going someplace, maybe out of your ordinary realm, uh, maybe uh, meeting with friends and siblings. Um, you know, I, I think since, you know, baby boomers on, people are having less children, and a lot of times, if you don't have children, but you do have siblings, cultivating relationships with your siblings and trying to heal those relationships is really important. It's a really beautiful thing, and it's good to find a way to do that, and so that's one of my little things for, for this week. Also, you've got a lot of creative energy with Mars in the fifth house right now. If you've got male children, you want to support them. Teach them about the world, you know, and, and how it is dangerous in different ways. And that they could be part of that danger or they could be part of the solution. And being a more protective force and getting rid of the evil players. Not like as far as like violence or, you know, murder or anything, but just um, correcting bad actions and leading towards good actions. You know, encouraging good behavior is even better. 
and that you are in this place now too where you look at your spirituality as a form of service that helps the world and that's not bad even if you're atheist but you're helping other people who cares you're doing the work I mean it's like that parable of Jesus you know who's gonna go help me in the vineyard and one says I'm not gonna do it and but ends up doing it anyway later on and the other one says I'm gonna do it never does it so it's not the lip service it's the actions yeah, so so time for right action. <laughs> and to celebrate you. Happy birthday to all the Libras having birthdays this weekend. Okay. Hello, Scorpio, and welcome to your horoscope. So, so we've got Mercury, and we've got Venus, and we've got Jupiter. And, um, you know, and we're, we're just coming down from the constellation of Saraswati and Navruti and all this stuff. And Scorpio, your key phrases I create. You're a really creative force. You, know, you, you have this vibe of, um, sure, there's darkness and secretiveness and all this other crazy stuff, but in there, there's also this beauty, this jewel of sensitivity and empathy and electric, delicious sexuality that um, is like the natural aphrodisiac for all the other signs. And with this, you're able to make more friends, and you're able to create more genuine intimacy. And there's also like this kind of psychic ability you have to feel things, feel other people out. And you know, sometimes the glass is half empty, sometimes it's half full, sometimes it's completely empty, and sometimes it's completely full. And it's okay, celebrate every single thing. I mean, I think there's a lot of restlessness about maybe where you live and stuff. Take action on your home. Make your house nicer. You know, um, Take action on issues involving your parents and family to make them better. Um, and, um, you know, if you have limits with your siblings and stuff, work on making things more solid. Work on being more transparent. Um, and, and, you know, work on all your good creative projects, all your groovy inventions and whatnot. You're, you're good at that right now. Well, hello, Sagittarius, and welcome to your horoscope. So, so it goes. Okay, so what we have here is um, a weekend where the moon until, like, a little afternoon on uh, Sunday is all about you. So today, all day Saturday, and a little bit on Sunday, you're going to be making a really nice, exciting presence. And um, you're going to be encouraging more athletic activity and more enthusiasm for the things you like, abilities to socially network, get together with folks, being out in nature, you're, you know, half animal, half human. You bring that, uh, that expanded horizons, expanded possibilities. Um, you know, you've gone through a little storm in your spiritual karma life. That's actually been a good storm. It's been like a nurturing one that's like brought flowers and mushrooms and stuff. And it's like all sweet and pretty. And uh, you can take that and do something to make things even better for yourself and others. And Jupiter's about to move into your sign, you know, in a, in a few weeks. So this is also very exciting. So you're about to just, like, come home to more faith, more joy, more risk-taking activity that brings forth a, a certain kind of fruition for something good. And you're being really solid and careful with your finances and trying to be more transparent and really look in at things. And... um that's a good thing. You know, you don't have to worry about that. All right. Oh, boy. Um, and pay attention to your dreams because they have messages. And your social life is hopping. You should have a lot of fun. And greetings, Capricorn, and welcome to your horoscope. Well... I love it that you're stepping up to the plate. You're becoming more responsible. You're becoming more solid. And I think, you know, if you're especially somebody born in like the late 80s or early 90s, you're really questioning a lot of your social group's activities 
and is this real? Is this worth it? And so everything's about value right now. And are you paying attention to your values? Are you contributing to them? Now, this weekend, I would say lay low because there's a little bit of unconscious energy with this partying too. And you just don't want to be part of your own undoing. But by Sunday afternoon and Monday and Tuesday, you're in the clear. It's all about it's Capricorn moon and it's all about you. And you know, Libra, Sun, in your 10th house is exalting your activities. You're making good decisions. You're doing good things. And I'm really happy to see that in you. Well, greetings, Aquarius, and welcome to your horoscope. So, I mean, what we're finding now is this is a happy time. This is a lucky time for you. Um, Libra rules your 9th house. It's a great house for travel. It's a good house for philosophy. It's a good house for helping others. It's a good house for going to an ashram or a, a monastery and working on your spiritual life, seeking higher education, going to a foreign country. And then you're also getting help from the Scorpio planets in your 10th house, like career-wise and your relationship to the public. It's going very well. You're doing really good. Even the karma with Pluto and Saturn, it's, it's not a bad place. You've got that old wisdom. You know, you've, it's like you're, you know, Aquarians are like they're born an old person in some ways. <laughs> Maybe born a wacky person too, but, you know, they're born with that kind of detached wisdom. And, uh, well, I thought they were, yes, they can be like young and goofballs. Listen, when we get older, we start playing with toys again. We, we do, you know, we do, there is a little bit of regression. Sometimes, you know, like suddenly people in their 80s have to wear Depends and all that stuff. I, I get it. And greetings, Pisces, and welcome to your horoscope. So, I mean, your sensitivity is so needed right now. Um, this time of year, you're much more psychic. You're a little more dependent on other people's money. But then again, that constellation from Saraswati last weekend was really giving you this divine wisdom. You've really been helping a lot of people. And some of your ability to help others is moving closer and closer towards the public realm. And so your career is about to get better. And your wisdom is to be trusted. And, and partly because you're like so inclusive of everybody and everything and can embrace everyone's attitude. And it makes you much more delightful and a wonderful person to be with. And next weekend, we're going to have a moon in Pisces. And we'll be heading towards the full moon. So everything's kind of building up. There's this energy build up this week. So be gentle on yourself when things aren't working your way. Because you've got a lot of things going for you. Begin the day with a positive intention, meditation. Pray and love your enemies as well as your family and close friends. That good things happen on all of them. Um, so with that, I'd say, you know, may all beings be happy. May all beings be healthy. May all beings be free of care. May all beings... Be be safe. Namaste. Be with you next week. Cosmic Cat.